What do we got here? What do we got here, Lou? What's, what's this? We got a little dogs in sunglasses, and there's a little pot of coins here. Feed him some coins, he'll gobble them up. Feed him some coins, he'll gobble them up. <laughs> Is he twerking? I, I, I'm sorry, I don't know if we're allowed to show that on CBS. <laughs> Got, 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 <laughs> got stamina, though. Yeah. <laughs> now, what you can't see, which is what I can see, is, let me turn it round, it looks like it's got a, like, huge <laughs> and it's just... <laughs> Look at that the right angle, look. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty good. Cool. <laughs> Ain't you a sick man, Lou? <laughs> <laughs> it's that time. It's time for the news. The news. And the House of Representatives was expected to hold Donald Trump's former chief of staff, Mark Meadows, in contempt of Congress today for failing to cooperate with the January 6th investigation. Contempt of Congress is one of the most shameful charges a person can get. And yet, yet, that still won't make us remember who Mark Meadows is. <laughs> picture him in your mind now. You can't. <laughs> Go on, see if you can just picture one. You can't. Nothing. President Trump's chief of staff wouldn't know him if I fell over him in Walmart. <laughs> and I could fall into an entire shelf of his, of his books and I still wouldn't know who it is. <laughs> Meadows is refusing to cooperate with the January 6th panel, claiming that his personal emails, texts and chats are covered by executive privilege as well as bro code. Last night, it was revealed that Meadows received numerous texts during the riot from Fox News hosts, Republican lawmakers, and even Donald Trump Jr., all urging him to get Donald Trump to stop the violence at the Capitol. I hate to say it, if ignoring texts is a crime, lock me up. <laughs> Don Jr. texted Meadows, asking him to do something. Meanwhile, Eric Trump texted, does anyone know where my Paw Patrol slippers are? <laughs> about this, right? I know that we all enjoy the convenience of texting, but if there was ever an instance that warranted a phone call in real time... <laughs> wouldn't this be it? And don't use the same form of communication you use to tell your friend you want extra Baja sauce on your chalupa. <laughs> I'm a big fan of a phone call. I like a phone call. It, it knocks it out. There's never a definitive ending to a text message conversation, and it's frustrating. You're right. Yeah. It's like the end of a firework display. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't matter how good the firework display was, you could have the best firework display you ever saw in your life. At the end, you go, oh, no, yeah, no, that was it. Yeah, that was it. <laughs> no, that was the last. Because you've had that moment like five times during it. You're like, and it goes, when you go, that was some. Oh, no, it's still going. It's still going. <laughs> that was some display, wasn't it? Well, oh, God, no, it's still going. <laughs> and then by the end, you're like, <laughs> no, I think that's it. We can go inside. <laughs> it doesn't matter how good your run of text messages is. Yeah. It's still going to get to a point where at some point someone goes, OK, I'm done now. I'm not replying anymore. <laughs> I've really gone in on this. I didn't expect to. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> in other news, study results were released today that confirms the success of Pfizer's new COVID treatment pill in the medicine called Paxlovid. Yeah, it's taken at the onset of symptoms. It reduces the risk of serious illness by almost 90%. Sounds like we just found the season's hottest new stocking fella, guys. Yeah. 
Pretty exciting, this. It really is exciting. This is a whole new breakthrough for half of the country to be totally skeptical about. <laughs> Taking a pill, dude. Per 90%, yeah, 90% your brain, brain burns, dude. <laughs> I'll take my chances. <laughs> yeah, but you just took a pill, it's ivermectin. Shut up, man! <laughs> Of course, like any medication, Paxlovid does come with side effects, which includes upset stomach, drowsiness, and accidentally swallowing your tongue while you tried to say Paxlovid. <laughs> we need a snappier name for this. I don't know why they've gone with Paxlovid. <laughs> it's the worst name imaginable. It, it sounds like pandemic and COVID with an X in the middle of it. Paxlovid. <laughs> Paxlovid. It's not even fun to say. It sounds Pax Australian. Paxlovid. Yeah. <laughs> It does, you're right. It sounds like a little town outside of Woolamaloo. <laughs> Come on, let's go down to Pax Lovett. Have a couple of cans. Have a couple of cans of Pax Lovett. <laughs> Moving on, a new study compared intelligent test scores between aerospace engineers, neurosurgeons and the general population. And it turns out that rocket scientists and brain surgeons are no smarter than the average person. This study was conducted by the Shania Twain Institute of That Don't Impress Me Much. <laughs> Participants completed an online test to measure aspects of intelligence like planning, reasoning, memory and attention. Although I should point out that two things that were notably absent from the test were rocket science and brain surgery. <laughs> Does this mean the phrase... Does this mean the phrase, it's not rocket science, we can't say that anymore? It's not rocket science, is it? Do we now have to say it's not rocket science, it's also not not rocket science? <laughs> have you ever done an IQ test? It, yeah, a long time ago. Don't want to talk about it? No. OK. <laughs> I, I legitimately, this is not a joke, could not do my son, my 10-year-old son's math homework the other night. He went, Dad, can you help me with this? I said, sure, buddy, of course you can. Yeah. Of course you can. Let's sit down. Come on, let's, up. let's open this up. <laughs> I looked at him, I felt like I was in... I felt like... I felt like I was sat with Matt Damon in Good Will Hunting. <laughs> So how do you know how to do this? <laughs> what are all these lines for? What's with the tiny numbers, bro? You got big numbers, a little line, and a tiny number? <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> should, should not all the numbers be the same size? What's with the tiny numbers? <laughs> As I did. They told us, we asked. When are we going to use this again? And they're like, you'll use it, and never once have we used it. This is the day. This is the day. This is the day. One time in a monologue, maybe it'll make it in the show. <laughs> and finally, we wanted to show you this. A family in South Africa noticed their cat staring intently into their newly decorated Christmas tree, and then they saw why. Have a look. There was a highly venomous snake in their Christmas tree. Yes. Look at that. To be fair, a snake is what the family's goth son wanted for Christmas. <laughs> Love it. Thank goodness the cat alerted the family. And I just want to say this. Screw you, elf on the shelf, for refusing <laughs> to do or say anything. Pretty tragic. They removed the snake, they got it out, but not before it ate four calling birds, three French hens, two turtle doves. <laughs> And that's the news. When we come back, Dwayne Wade is going to be here. We're going to play some basketball. Come on back, everybody.